Um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm glad to be here today. What I've been asked to do is to really speak to you about um, an institutional setting, so a behavioral health facility, and how we can make that feel a little bit less institutional. Um, so we're going to review a project that our team completed earlier this year. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. So this is at the Neurodiagnostic Institute. That was shortened to NDI. So um, this project is the first new state psychiatric hospital that's been built since 1952. Um, it's really based around the advanced evaluation and treatment of patients who have some of the most challenging um, and complex mental health issues. So um, this is a state facility. The state was, um, you know, as they were contemplating this project, thinking about they had a lot of aging facilities. Um, they were contemplating some new uh, operational strategies, um, also wanting to enhance relationships with some of their outpatient partners. Um, so they were seeing a gap in, in care there between their, their five existing state hospitals. So the NDI was, is really um, a facility for um, diag uh, diagnosing patients and then establishing treatment protocols and starting that treatment. So um, there's some general information here. Um, this project or this facility is located on the east side of Indianapolis. Um, it's a partnership with Community Hospital East. Um, it sets on their campus. There is a connector between the NDI building and um, Community East, and there are some shared services between the two. Um, as you can see, it, is, it's a, it uh, consists of seven floors, so it's, it's, it's a vertical facility in an urban environment, and so that was kind of a different model as well um, for, for a state behavioral health facility. So. Um, Anyway, it has about 159 adult patient beds, and there's also um, 65 adolescent and children's beds as well. So some of the challenges that, that we faced on the project was, again, like patient and safe staff safety and then maintenance and durability. So um, some of the things we, we really looked at were sight lines, um, the visual and physical separation of the pa different patient populations. Um, also looking to help with reduction of um, the building maintenance. So um, behavioral health patients are very self-destructive to themselves and to the environments around there. So it's, um, the maintenance staff were constantly having to maintain and repair their facilities. So really looking at durable um, finishes and detailing. Um, also, the use of anti-ligature and tamper-resistant fixtures throughout. Um, we also had a number of opportunities as well. So, like looking to promote like a holistic treatment approach, um, we wanted to create an environment that was a healing environment um, because this is a healthcare facility; it is not a prison. Although, um, in some aspects, it it could be very similar. Patients aren't; they can't leave. Um, there's a lot of um, added security in the facility, and there's a lot of concern about uh, patient safety as well as staff safety. Um, some of our other challenges, like integrating some biophilic design concepts. So biophilia has to do with integrating nature into a space. So patients respond very well to references to, to nature and the environment. So that was integrated into the project as well. Um, also wanting to create some positive distractions, so uh, integrating some large-scale artwork um, in the facility as well. And then the layout of, of each of the units is really based around a neighborhood concept. Um, so we, we started off our project, we, we did a number of exercises with some of the staff and leadership to, to gather information from them. We typically do this on a lot of our projects. It really helps the team kind of come together holistically. Um, we discover or you know, gather information related to people's thoughts, ideas, and goals for the project. And then we take that information and we develop some design guidelines, which you see up here. We also did a lot of studies and provided information to our client on color and how patients uh, respond to that. Um, so that was included in some of our visioning. So after we did our visioning, we also like to develop a design concept 
uh, for the project. And so for this one, um, th conveniently what we found out is we looked at where the state has their existing state facilities. They were all located um, near like um, a river and also near a state park. So, and there was a desire from leadership to really recognize the whole network of state facilities. Um, the hospitals that are located in, in Madison, Logansport, Evansville, um, and then Richmond. Uh, we wanted to recognize that in, as well as, you know, um, the NDI within the facility. So um, we kind of came up with, with this nice concept statement of connecting Indiana's communities and finding respite and retreat in its natural beauty. Based on our concept, we started to identify how that would be used with, within the facility itself. So we had seven floors. So our first floor, which was you know our public spaces, our clinic, and our administrative suite, we kind of based that around the creek. Uh, the second floor housed our special population that was based on the prairie. Uh, the third floor contained uh, the children and the adolescent units, and so uh, that was really based upon kind of what you see in nature. Um, it was a little bit more animal-based and graphic in design. Uh, four, five, and six were our adult floors, so that was, uh, fourth floor was the forest, and then the fifth was the lake, and the sixth floor was the meadows. And then the seventh floor houses an adolescent autism unit, or autistic unit, um, as well as an adult unit up there. So we're going to take a look at the lobby. So this is just sort of a, is a plan. Um, you can see some of the, the curvilinear lines in the flooring. That's, that's reminiscent of water flowing through a space. Um, Within our public space, we have a, uh, like an education center that's used by staff. There's a security desk. Um, this facility is, um, is a secure facility, so you can come into the, the vestibule, and then you have to buzz in to get into the space. Visits to patients are all scheduled. Um, also on the first floor, there's uh, a couple family visit rooms, so sometimes uh, family members can come in and they can call up and video chat with their, their loved one or family member, but they cannot see them face to face or in person. So um, lobby space and then we walk back into the clinic space behind that. So this is a shot from um, the main, the front entry door, looking back to the security desk at the back. So. You can start to see the lines in the floor, the curvilinear lines. Uh, we did some, some pebble tile um, inset there in the center around the column, and then we've got some furnishings in there that kind of are reminiscent of stones or pebbles that you might see. Um, also, we did, um, we spent a, uh, some time looking at artwork as well. So you can see the large scale artwork on the right. Um, those are actually images of um, the state parks that uh, we recognized that are located near the other state facilities. So we used a local um, um, art consultant here in Indianapolis, Insight Art. They sent out a photographer to each of the uh, state parks and um, took those images for us and then put it together in that composition. So there you can see that's, that's um, those two images that are on either side of the security desk. And then we also, again, wanted to recognize the other state facility. So the photographer also went out to the other um, state facilities and took these images. So um, kind of from left to right is Evansville Children's and then Logan Sport, Richmond, Madison, and then the Evansville, the adult hospital there. So that is also located in the lobby. Um, we couldn't see that in the image, but that was located there in the lobby as well. This next image, this is an image back in the treatment center. So once you leave the lobby, there is a clinic space um, that is used to treat patients. Um, there's a multi-function exam room in there for, which serves for like dental, podiatry, optometry, um, we also had an infusion area. They do genetic testing there as well. And there's also um, kind of a larger sleep lab. Uh, behavioral health patients typically have issues with sleeping, and so they are able to do those evaluations there as well. And there's also then a couple treatment rooms.
within the clinic itself. So we're going to move up to the adult units, and we'll be taking a look at now kind of the, the layout of a typical unit, and then we're going to look at um, some of the details that were incorporated in there. So this is kind of half of an adult unit, so this would be floors four, five, and six. So um, what you see kind of at the top of the plan is there in the middle is the unit control desk. On one side is the day room, on the other side is the dining space. Um, and then the patient rooms are located around there. So the patient rooms are all on exterior, so they all have a, have a window to the outside. Um, the staff spaces are at the center core inside. Um, so you can kind of see that layout. Um, along kind of the bottom edge over here, there's a couple group therapy rooms. There's also a patient laundry over there as well. And then you can start to see some, some of the yellow lines and some of the blue lines. The yellow represents kind of large-scale artwork that we were able to integrate into the project, and the blue represents kind of uh, location of some accent colors. So we'll look at some images, and you'll be able to see how all this kind of played out. So each floor, um, we developed some graphics and some imagery. So for the fourth floor, that was based on the trees. Uh, the first elevation there is what you see when you get off the elevator. So it's integrating um, the imagery, the color for the floor, and then the signage for the floor as well uh, to help identify that. And then the other two images down here are some elevations in the, the patient area. So um, one of the things that um, we've, we had, an, obviously because this is behavioral health, we had a number of guidelines we needed to follow. We wanted to be able to get large scale artwork um, within the, um, the project, and we, but we also knew that it needed to be really abuse resistant as well. Um, so we um, looked at a wall protection product, product called Acrovin by Design. So that's kind of a, a rigid high impact product that it's used in a lot of different areas. It's also used for like corner guards and handrails and all that sort of thing. Um, but you can also print on it as well. So that's what you're seeing here, um, the materials that we've used. So this is the fifth floor based on the lakes. You can see we had a different kind of color palette for that. And then the sixth floor was based on was the, the meadows as well. So you can see the imagery um, that we utilized for that. So we'll look at some actual um, photographs of the, the project that was as it's um, completed. So this is uh, looking at the fifth floor, um, looking at the day room space. So you can see there the, the application of color, the, the center core where the staff is located, we've got glass up there. So there's a good visual between where the staff are working, where that person is sitting at the unit control desk. Um, so if there's a, there's a need for help or assistance, you know, there's that good sight line there. Um, you can also see kind of in the background down towards the end of the corridor, there is there are windows there, so patients have an opportunity at either end of that corridor there to have access to natural light. There's a window seat um, located there. Um, I also want to talk just a little bit about some of the materials we used on the project. So we used a paperless impact resistant drywall. So um, a lot of times patients will pick at the drywall, they'll pick at the seams. Um, so this, um, the material that we use will, will help minimize some of the impact of that. We also use like a scuff resistant paint. Um, the TV enclosure that you see there was detailed. We're using a polycarbonate panel in there. There's no glass. Um, all the, the like screws and whatnot were all tamper resistant. Um, so there was, there was a lot of attention put to that like any door hardware that you see or hinges are all um, uh, tamper resistant. They're, they're um, you know, suitable to be used in an application like this. Um, so here's a view on one of the other floors looking at the dining um, area that's also kind of part of the day room. So again, we had a TV located on both sides. You can kind of see the unit control desk there in the middle and then start to see kind of the, the artwork a little, in a little bit more closer format. But it, it was um, 
large scale. It spanned from door frame to door frame and went to the top of, of the door frames as well. So an opportunity to really get um, some nice expression of um, art in the space. Um, the furnishings that we used in the project, like all the lounge pieces, were, were a Norex product, uh, behavioral health grade, uh, Norex tables here. Um, these dining chairs here are from a company called Spec, and it is a behavioral health chair. Um, there was a lot of discussions as we went through this project about do we use lightweight furniture that patients can throw and then, you know, hopefully somebody wouldn't get hurt as much, or do we weight the furniture down and make it really difficult for patients to be able to throw that? So these are all weighted down as much as they can be. I think these chairs are probably, I don't know, maybe a couple hundred pounds, but uh, the furniture installer got to also install all the ballast in the bottoms of all these chairs. So this is a shot, it kind of gives you a closer up look of the artwork, and then you also have a view um, into the patient room as well. So again, this wall protection product is called is Acrovin by Design. It's a rigid high impact wall covering. Um, the images that were selected here and that were, um, we, we used on the project, those were all selected by the clinical staff um, at NDI. Uh, we had a lot of discussion, are they photo real images or are they not photo real? Um, and, and, you know, our, it was decided that we wanted to do something that was a little bit softer and more um, watercolor-like than uh, realistic. So I wanted to talk a little bit about our patient rooms. Um, in each of the patient rooms, we have a bed, and then we also have a shelving unit uh, for personal belongings. So. Um, we worked with a company called Futurist to develop the shelving unit. So it has a steel framework to it, and then it is completely covered in uh, solid surface material. So there are no exposed edges. Um, these were all manufactured off-site and then brought in the contractor, you know, built the, um, the drywall base and the bulkhead up above, and these were just slid in and installed. Uh, so you can see there's three shelves in there, and there's also a small writing surface. We were required to, to provide a writing surface as well. Um, the bulkhead was extended out over that writing surface. There was concern about patients standing on there, jumping down on their head and hurting themselves. We put that bulkhead up there to, um, to, to assist with people not being able to fully stand up on those. Um, the beds in the patient rooms are a striker uh, behavioral health bed, and they're made out of steel, and they weigh about 300 pounds. Um, we also had a lot of discussion about are the beds secured to the floor, or are they not secured to the floor? Um, are they sealed, or are they not sealed to the floor? And we really went back and forth uh, quite a bit with that. Um, did a lot of mock-ups as well. So it was decided um, they would not secure them to the floor, but they would seal them to the floor um, because it was just easier. The maintenance staff felt it was just easier for them to maintain them if we did it that way. So this is a shot of the unit control desk. You can kind of get a better idea of how much glass was behind there, the, and the staff works in the space behind there. Um, there was also a lot of discussion around this unit control desk and behave, because this is a behavioral health facility, um, did that want to be fully enclosed with glass that would provide more, maybe more protection for the staff that are working behind there? Or do we leave it open? It's, you know, I guess more inviting to the patient. And, and so anyway, that went back and forth for a while as well. And so it was decided that it would be lower, it would be open. It's a healing environment. They wanted it to feel like that. Um, so that is what we did. Um, you can kind of see here on the side, there is a door there. So there was concern about patients kind of getting in behind there, um, behind the staff sitting there at the unit control desk. So we did end up with the doors there. Whether or not they stay there, I, I guess we'll see, see what happens um, after they've been in there for a while. But we did do the doors there. Uh, one of the other things we did as well is the, the, the center portion that sets up higher, we, that was added there to uh, kind of enclose the monitors for the unit control desk. So there's a lot of security cameras uh, located um, on each unit, and the person sitting there at the unit control desk is, is constantly looking at that, as well as the people that 
are out in the day room space. So we created this solid surface surround and the monitors kind of sit back inside there um, just to provide a little bit more protection since the, the overall desk height was, was fairly low. Um, one other thing I wanted to talk to, or to mention is that on the patient units, we also had what we call tunable lighting. So this is not like red, green, blue, like color changing light, but what it is is the tunable lighting changes color over the course of a day. So in the morning, it's warmer, and then as you get to midday, it gets lighter and brighter, and then as it, you get to evening time, it, it turns warmer again. So that's really better for a patient's, like their circadian rhythms. A lot of times behavioral health patients have um, difficulty sleeping, and because they're in an environment where they're pretty much totally enclosed, they really wanted to be able to emulate the course of a day with the lighting. So that was, that was just done in specific areas, um, the day rooms specifically where patients uh, spend a lot of their time. So this is just an image of the unit control desk from the backside, so you can kind of see what that enclosure looks like. So the monitors kind of set back in there, the, the surface drops down at the back to really sort of enclose those. Um, also all the lighting controls for, for the day room area and the patient rooms, um, there's kind of a master um, uh, set of controls there at the unit control desk as well. Um, this is a shot of one of our patient toilets. So um, they're all very similar, similarly laid out, but um, they all have security grade fixtures in them, um, as, well, as well as like a polished steel mirror. We used a slip resistant kind of raised tread tile in the shower space itself for some added safety. Um, each of the um, Patient toilets has a lockable patient cabinet. That was a custom item. We worked with a, actually a gun cabinet manufacturer to come up with that. Um, the patient toilet was fully mocked up. The owner was really concerned about um, access points because as the gentleman, gentleman before me talked about patients plugging up the toilet, they wanted to make sure that they were able to access those easily uh, to clean those out um, should that happen. We're gonna move on to the children and adolescent unit. So this floor plan, the second and third floor are laid out a little differently than the upper floors. Um, but on this floor, we have an adolescent male unit, an adolescent female unit, and then we have a children's unit. So the children's unit, those kids are typically between the ages of eight and 12, although they will take kids younger than that. They've had five years old, five year olds um, on that unit as well. Um, so you can kind of see some of, the, some of the materials that we've used. We used a, like a wood look sheet vinyl flooring um, in the patient rooms and that kind of spills out into the corridors. Um, and then we had some accent colors that we used kind of in certain areas. Um, we, we used the same sheet vinyl flooring throughout the facility um, for continuity's sake. Again, kind of a reference to a natural material. Of the, the, the children's units, they had an identifying graphic. Um, it, it was really based more on, on some of the things we used in the adult units. We found that when we were working with the children's unit there, there were certain things that were triggers for them. So we had to be really careful about the imagery that we put in there. So for the adolescent girls, it was kind of based on flowers or a meadow. So the wall protection graphic is, is the yellow image at the top, and that's located between two of our unit control desks. The, the elevation there in the middle, this is um, what you see when you walk down the corridor, and those are the doors to the, the girls' uh, patient rooms. So that's just a graphic that's done in paint. So this is an image of the adolescent girls' unit, kind of looking at the unit control desk, and then the day rooms um, on this floor conveniently are kind of located, some are in co corner locations, so we've got a nice amount of, of glass and natural light uh, coming into the space. Um, you can see some of the Norex furnishings that we've used there. Each of the floors we put the rockers on. Uh, behavioral health patients usually are, uh, might be nervous and have a lot of nervous energy, so they like to sit in the rockers. Um, so that is our adolescent girls unit.
And then, so kind of uh, the same thing for the adolescent boys unit. So we picked up kind of on a graphic uh, for the adolescent boys. It was based on a tree. So the image at the top is in the dining space. So that is our wall protection graphic based on tree rings. And then we have the paint graphic there in the middle. And that's based on kind of um, like the veining that you might see in a leaf of a tree. And then the color palette for adolescent boys was blue with a little bit of yellow in there. So this is a shot of the day room for the adolescent boys. So you can see the, the large scale graphic. And again, that's just paint um, as well. And again, you can see how we've, we've kind of taken the same elements and repeated those. So our TV enclosure is the same, that w same one that we saw on the adult unit. It's detailed the same way. Um, and again, using similar furnishings, but kind of picking up on some of the colors to, uh, to add a little bit of interest into the space. And these are a couple shots. Uh, the one on the left is of the dining space. Um, you can see the, the graphic with the tree rings. And then this is a shot into the children's rooms, and they're very similar to the adult rooms. However, the beds are located in the corner in the children's rooms. Um, the staff just felt like the kids kind of like to be in a corner more, and they were, they were um, okay with that being the case. Um, the, in the adult rooms, the beds are always out in the middle of the room, so there's access from both sides um, if, if need be. And then the children's unit. So for the younger kids, um, we really looked at bringing some animals in. We needed to make sure, however, the animals weren't too scary or too frightening. Um, so we really wanted to incorporate a lot of color and interest in there. So that top image is the wall protection graphic that's in the children's dining space. And then the elevation in the middle is at the patient room um, where, where the patient rooms are at. So we kind of had this giant ladybug that was sort of meandering down the walls. I think the, the guy who was actually doing the painting of the ladybugs was very methodical in doing this. And I heard, I heard some comments about, they were referring to the little dots as maybe like ladybug droppings. So, um, yeah, imagine that. So, so here's a shot uh, looking down the corridor. I see this, the, the dining space and the graphic over on the left. Um, the enclosure for the TV, they, so they did put a TV in this dining space and that's more, that was a purchased item, so that's a behavioral health grade uh, TV enclosure. And then the view down towards the end, you can see the, the day room for the children's is kind of back in the corner. And you can start to see some of the little ladybugs in the space. And then there's a shot, um, this is just in the, uh, the children's uh, day room space. You can see how we put more color in those areas. So the second floor of the project houses the um, special populations unit, so that's psych med. So if there are some patients um, that have some minor medical issues, they can go down to the second floor. And in, in the past, um, those patients would have to leave their behavioral health facility, go to a separate hospital. They'd have to send security along with them as well. So they wanted to make sure that they could treat uh, patients with some minor issues without them having to leave the facility. There's also a Jerry cognitive unit, so patients with traumatic brain injuries or illnesses like Alzheimer's would be accommodated on the second floor. And then there's also a school for the kids. So the state's required to provide uh, schooling for these kids who are their patients, and so that school is actually run by IPS. So that was all located on the second floor. So this is an image um, in the special population unit, kind of looking at their, their specific graphic. It, kind of in the background, you can see a patient room door. We also used um, color on this unit as well. We kind of grouped it by uh, patient rooms to help uh, patients who might have Alzheimer's start to identify their spaces. Um, so they all didn't just look alike to them. So our school. Um, so just some elevations in here of what we did. So the top elevation um, has some patterned glass that you see kind of on the pattern on the lower left-hand corner. 
Uh, that's in the computer room. We use some large-scale graphics and color to help um, identify the different classrooms. So the school itself has four classrooms. Uh, there's a computer room, there's an art room as well. Uh, we also had a multi-purpose room where the kids could kind of go and do some sort of in, inside physical activities. And then there was also a gaming room for the kids as well. The gaming room um, was a privilege, so kids had to earn uh, the time uh, to spend in, in that space. So this is a shot of one of the classroom spaces. So um, the white walls are covered in a marker board paint. So we used color to identify the room, the walls that you could write on, and then the blue ones are just um, standard paint. Um, we also, um, the furniture in here, we had a lot of discussion about what to provide in here for these kids. Um, we ended up going with this chair, and it does have casters on it, and um, I would imagine they may, they may have taken them off, because after, I think there was just more discussion afterwards, like our kids have a lot of energy, and do we really want to have wheels on our chairs, but um, that, that is what they selected to put in there. So there's also, for the kids, an outdoor play space. So I had mentioned there's a connector between NDI and Community East. So this sets on the roof of the connector between the two facilities. Uh, so you walk out by where the computer room is located by the school, and so we have this outdoor play space for the kids. Um, so it has like a synthetic turf on it and, with, and some rubberized surfaces. So there's picnic tables out there. The kind of white area, that's where the basketball goal was to be located. Um, they also had some miscellaneous playground equipment as well. We also had a treatment mall. So the other, the sixth floor, one half of the unit was an adult unit, the other half was a treatment mall. So this was a place for uh, patients. They could go up there for a number of different services and activities um, as well. The, all that time up there would be scheduled. But um, kind of in the lower left-hand corner over there is where we had a gym. So there's a gym, there's a weight room up here, there's also a computer room uh, for patients to use as well. Kind of at the top, you can kind of see we've got this inset in the floor. We kind of created a racetrack because this was also a place for patients. They could be able to, to go up there and walk because these patients like to do a lot of walking. Um, so the, the, um, actually the, the area at the top of the plan, that was full height glass. So when you walked through there, you could see out there was a nice view uh, to the outside, a lot of natural light coming in there. But some of our other spaces in there include kind of a general store so patients could purchase a few items. There's a clothing store. We also had a salon here as well for patients to get their hair cut. Um, sometimes they're in there for a while and they, they need that service. Um, there's also a chapel. We had an art and music therapy room. We also had a lounge area as well where patients could go and do ping pong or foosball or maybe watch a movie. And then we also had what we called our daily living skills room. And we, these are elevations uh, or images on the left of the salon and then of the clothing store. And then we also have an image here. This is of the daily living skills room. So a lot of these patients, they like to spend some time training and working with them to be more independent. So um, in this space, they, they would do things like, you know, teaching them to prepare simple meals. Um, they might also do other sorts of classes in here um, as well to, to help uh, patients be more independent, um, you know, one, once they're able to leave the facility. So in conclusion, I guess what I would say about our project is, is that uh, we were able to, des to design a safe and durable environment, so safe for the, for the patients, safe for the staff, um, but it also allows patients to feel very comfortable and um, nurtured as well. And we were able to impl implement a lot of good design uh, strategies within the project as well. Um, and, um, create a facility that really addresses a lot of behavioral health needs without it feeling like an institutional environment. So that is the end of my presentation. So if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Okay, thank you.